Good morning, Dr. Andy Kirshner here. I'd like to welcome you back to the Backwards blog. Today I'm going to introduce part one of our short series on fibromyalgia. Now, I thought today we would start off just discussing exactly what fibromyalgia is. Fibromyalgia is one of those sort of mysterious conditions that affect some people, and unfortunately there are a lot of people in the medical community who don't really take it seriously. I can remember when I was a resident that when you would pick up a chart and show it to the attending physician, if they saw fibromyalgia on it, more than, more than a few times I saw the physician just kind of roll their eyes when they saw that diagnosis, and which is kind of unfortunate because people who have fibromyalgia are really suffering a lot. Now fibromyalgia is a painful condition that affects the soft tissues in somebody's body, and nobody is really clear what the cause of it is. Now that makes things particularly difficult because you can do blood tests and all sorts of studies and x-rays and nothing comes up positive, so it's sort of a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning we rule out everything else and when nothing else is left, your diagnosis is fibromyalgia. Now, there are a couple things that you need to know. Fibromyalgia has some key components that we look for that help us make the diagnosis a little more clear. First of all, fibromyalgia is non-articular, and that means that it doesn't directly affect joints. In order to correctly diagnose fibromyalgia, we have to identify 11 of 17 trigger points, which are points somewhere on the body which when you touch them can cause severe pain which radiates somewhere else in the body. Now as I said there are 11 of 17 classic trigger points and the important thing to keep in mind is that they don't always have to be there all at the same time. So if you're examining a patient over time, if I have somebody who comes in here with pain and I don't know what the cause is, we look at them a few times and if I find those trigger points over time we can start to make the diagnosis of fibromyalgia. Beyond that, patients with fibromyalgia experience serious fatigue, they have a difficult time doing a lot of activities, doing too much actually causes them to have more pain, their sleep is very very poor, and they can frequently become depressed which isn't really surprising because if you're in pain 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, that can lead to depression and that's again not really a surprise. So those are the basic things that we look for in fibromyalgia. Now there are a couple things that we do look for in blood work that we have to rule out. Um, frequently Lyme disease can mimic fibromyalgia, so that's one of the blood tests that we look for. And we also like to rule out connective tissue disorders and lupus as well. Um, that helps us to identify what we're really looking at. Once you come up with the diagnosis of fibromyalgia, that's when you can start getting down the road on things that you can do for it. And we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do for that in our next visit. Uh, we're going to have two uh, posts on fibromyalgia. One of them is going to be on things that you can do at home and around your workplace to help you get uh, better relief from your fibromyalgia pain, and the post after that we'll be discussing uh, the medications that we can use for fibromyalgia. Thank you for joining me here on the Backwards blog. Talk to you soon.